Hey guys, welcome into the Pucker Reborn channel. Today we're going to be talking about Origins and Battle Brothers, my thoughts and opinions based on 2,500 hours in a worst to first format. I do want to address the retinue video because I had good, bad, and ugly comments. The ugly comments can kiss my ass. The people that disagree with me, I appreciate you guys because I love having that conversation. I think the world needs to come together and have more conversations when they disagree instead of acting like this is how it should be, you're wrong, nana nana boo boo. Just keep that in mind. I'm not the golden standard. You're not the golden standard. This is just my opinions based on my hours in the game. So without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Coming in at number 14 is going to be the Manhunters. The Manhunters start with two Manhunters, then uh, four Indebted. The Indebted themselves, they cannot, if they die, they die. They don't get struck down. They only can get to level 7. They get 10% more experience based on the ledger. And uh, when they get whipped, they can go from no morale, they're fleeing, to good morale or even high morale, which gives them a buff. The whips come from the, um, the Manhunters themselves. Manhunters get... 10% less experience. They uh, can be any origin. They're not specific to the Manhunters. And uh, the last thing really is that you need to have equal amount of indebted and Manhunters or more indebted and less Manhunters. If you don't, then you'll have uh, indebted running away. Don't ask me how that happens. You think there'd be more Manhunters to uh, indebted that would keep them in line. I don't know. Um, yeah, So the, and also indebted... We all know what that means, overhead or overhype. So, we're, yeah, we get it. <laughs> uh, the other thing that's really nice to this faction is that you have, or this origin, is the fact that you go from 99 slots up to 108. I personally didn't know that until looking into it some more. You get a bunch of events across the land. You can have an event where you can get two indebted guys. There's events in the far north where you're getting a barbarian or otherwise known as a northern indebted. They have more hit points, which is really nice. Now, when I play this, I usually go with a fatigue neutral build for my indebted. The problem that I come across with the indebted is that they don't have really good melee. So you're so for me, how I play it is I go a lot. A lot of times, all of them have backstabber because I have their strength in numbers, and that's what you kind of play by. Because you can oh, and this is the other thing: you can have up to 16 men on the battlefield, 25 total. Um, so that's how I play it. I think that that's the most effective way that I've come to find. And, uh, yeah, you can smother your enemies. And it can be a lot of fun, but it also can be a pain in the butt because if a few good indebted end up dying, then you're starting you're starting from scratch in that, uh, in that category. And they're not great bros in the first place. Um, I don't know if I already said this, but fatigue neutral builds. That's, that's the idea. When they get higher up on the... When they get to a higher level, if they're getting close to 7, I, I try my best to keep them with... Um, I try to keep them all with uh, fatigue neutral when they become stronger. I would suggest for retinue, I'd go with the blacksmith specifically because with the bros dying, you're gonna want all that gear back. And if you do end up getting really good with this this run, you can get legendary items on them. Not legendary, named items. I'll say it right. You can get a bunch of name items on them, and you don't want to lose that stuff. So yeah, it's it's a good run. The the the, the kryptonite to this run, as far as I'm concerned, or for as far as I remember it is the fact that uh, morale checks. Uh, you can have a bunch of manhunters whipping your bros, but when, when everybody's screaming and everything, like the guys are screaming, you get overwhelmed. Uh, it can be a really slippery slope. The When you crack the whip at somebody, it's guaranteed to, to bring them back. So you don't have to worry about the hit chance or anything like that. Um, it brings them back to a higher level of status. So you, you can work it to make it work, but I just, I don't know. I just, the the extra thought to keep them in high morale it's just not my favorite it's just not my favorite origin i don't know that it's bad let me know if you guys like it i got one guy in the discord that absolutely loves this freaking uh this this setup but it's just not for me personally so let me know what you guys think about that and also in terms of the discord guys while well, i got you for a second here make sure to join the discord we have a, a link below and if you want to debate me on some of these things i love having guys and just we can have a we can have a good discussion and uh figure it out so anyways that's my thoughts on number 14. number 13 is going to be a new company there's no advantages or disadvantages to this company it's literally the tutorial without a tutorial um it has the companions three companions and it can start with a lot of crowns starting out 
if you start with high funds, you can get 2,900 crowns, but otherwise there's no real special start to this. To me, this brings back nostalgia from when I first started when there was no DLCs or anything. Um, this is what I was playing. So like I can think back to that time and it was so it was it was a lot of fun but uh it's it's more just a memory not that i'd ever do it again because it's it's just so bland of a start uh but at least it's not bad it's not something that i don't like like the uh like the manhunters i just do not like the manhunters obviously so uh yes yeah, so that's number 13 number 12 is going to go to the southern mercenaries now this is the inverse effect of the new company essentially you start in the south hence the southern mercenaries you do get unique gear to the south and uh, you do start with the three companions you can start with the higher funds and um, yeah it's it's fun this one actually is different just because you can start with a whip I think that that is really fun to start in that regard and then you can also go to the arena right away and so there's there's more of a uh, there's more going on here than the other one. It's not as bland. You can actually make this something unique and still have the crowns to start it out. Um, but yeah, there's no real special way that I can tell you to really run this. You can. This is so open ended. These these last two here are so open ended. You can you can pretty much do whatever you want to want to do. But at least you start close to a place where you can make a lot of money. Before I get into number eleven, just understand, guys, that uh, you know. From here on out, these are all these are all origins that I technically like. I just have in a particular order which I would rather want to play them. Things can change, of course, but I do have my uh, my reasons as to why not and why they are in this order. So in the next two, I know people are going to have their words, but uh, just understand this is just my personal thoughts and opinions on it. So without further ado, let's look at number eleven. So coming in at number eleven, it's going to be the Beast Slayers. The Beast Slayers are a fun start, but they come with their own things that I. Personally, I'm not a fan of. I would say it's a it's a 10 out of 10 in terms of role play. This is a role play faction, if you ask me. Don't get me wrong, you can win all, you can beat every legendary location with this with this unit. It's not like I'm saying that, but, uh, but yeah, let's get into what they actually are. So you start with three beast slayers and decent equipment with some trophies. The trophies are witch hair. You have two uh, wolf pelts and a night elixir with a dog on the side of that. So. Uh, you have an, you're an expert tracker, so you can see tracks further away. Expert skinners, so you, you get a 50% chance to drop an additional trophy. If you're facing the Kraken, you get a 100% chance, which that is so sweet. That is actually really awesome. Uh, and then people are prejudiced against you. You get 10% worse prices in terms of buying and selling. You're, in terms of starting funds, you can start with a high of 18, medium 1,500, and low 1,100. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much all that that it is described there. I will say that, um, you know, when you read the actual uh, text of the Beast Slayer, they live on the fringes of society. They look for beasts and villages, and that's how they make their crown. They like the dangerous ways of life. So there's nothing indicating that they're just so weird. You know, they have a, they want to hunt beasts. I don't think that's weird. I think you need a unit like this. I think that's a very cool role play unit. The Beast Slayer icon actually shows Geralt of Rivia, which is um, from the Witcher, of course. But they're not Witchers. They Yes, they have the basis of killing beasts, but they're not Witchers per se. That's how I feel about it. Let me know if uh, you feel indifferent. But that's why I, br I bring it up for the simple fact that I am not a fan of uh, them, like people being prejudiced against them. Why would you jack up prices? This person's like fixing your town, making life better. I understand that Battle Brothers is a world of... I love this world. I've been reading The, the Witcher... Uh, or the Witch Hunter book by Casey, and, and it's it's an absolutely incredible. I'm coming to the end of it right now, and I'm ready for her, or ready for her, oh my gosh, ready for the, his next book. I don't know why I said her. So that's going to be exciting, but I will say, uh, going full circle with this, is that the, the thing that makes this such a high role play is the fact that you're talking about like the the retinue aspect of this the retinue has added so much to the game since it came out with blazing deserts but specifically to the beast slayer it's added a whole new dynamic this could like i say from here on out they could he could like these factions or these origins could change they could be better or worse in my eyes but i just i love the role playing aspect if you have like the alchemist getting the snake oil because you're getting an additional you're getting a diff additional trophy that's insanely helpful for this faction another one could be like the lookout having a greater radius so you can find those beasts i think the lookout is a fantastic retinue uh person but more importantly to this faction it's going to only add to that the scout of course making them faster on any terrain 
15% faster. I know how you guys feel about that. I think that's incredible as well. Getting You could actually go with the trader as well for the fact of trying to make more money because it can be a little uh, can be a little scarce. I would also say in terms of role play, the negotiator would be freaking perfect for this run because again you you need to get more money as as best as actually possible in cartographer because a lot of times you're out in the you're out in the wilderness uh constantly coming across stuff trying to look for more beasts so it's just like i said it's a real role play run um that's that's one thing i love about it but it does fall short for me because i hate the price drop the prices i like making money in this game oh man do i like blowing it too mostly making it uh, i'm kind of a I won't even say it. Tank, Tank Alicia, if you're watching this, you know exactly what I am. So, <laughs> anyways, that's number 11, guys. Number 10 is going to go to the Oath Takers. The Oath Takers start with two Battle Hardened Warriors. You get good equipment with them, of course. And uh, you are sworn to young Anselm's teachings, which gives you, instead of inhibitions, it gives you oaths, and the oaths come with their advantages and disadvantages alike. It's kind of like going up to three doors and them telling you, which what is behind each door and then you just got to choose it and deal with it so uh in terms of the starting funds it's 1500 crowns for high a thousand for medium and low is 500 that's really low especially when you come to you come down to it of these being high tier brothers the inverse effect in my opinion of the hedge knights so uh, there is that you can only have 18 brothers in your roster which is kind of interesting i did not know that uh or I did not, I knew this, but I didn't know. I don't know why it's only 18. Yeah, because usually it's 20. But uh, besides that, you're forced to take those oaths because you don't have ambitions. You're not able to get like the goblin trophy, the bone necklace, or any of these special things that you can get through the the origins or the not the origins, the ambitions. You also can get the Lindworm Slayer for free, and also as well, which I've done this several times now, is get the oath takers for free. They can get them in events and so on. There's plenty of events with the oath takers so these these zealots are pretty cool um i i really love oath takers and if, if we're taking the origin aside i love oath takers i love uh getting these guys i feel like you can always find a good oath taker somewhere they can be a little pricey but so can hedge knights they're essentially the more nimble hedge knights is how i view them uh they also have really high resolve as well so that you have a multi-facet when you actually start this i didn't say this but when you start, you get Young Anselm's Skull, which is a resolve uh, boost, and then also you get the battle standard. Now, if we're looking at the retinue aspect of this, uh, I think it's it's more of a, I want to say it's more of a meta run. Uh, you have because you have the stronger bros, but the problem is the ambitions throw you for a loop. When you pick an ambition, or in other words, known as the oath, it can throw you for a loop. For instance, if you're taking on a crisis of the undead, right? What you're going to want is you're going to want some kind of buff against them, against the undead. But unfortunately, you can't choose that. You can't just like, oh, you're going to get this buff against the undead, whatever. That's not the case. And so when it comes to your retinue, you want to be as top-notch as absolute possible. That's how I view it. Um, so that's why I'd go more meta. You can roleplay this, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't, but I feel as if they are more, uh, you need to be on your game need to be on your game because i've had it where i'm in a crisis that i need this and i'm getting all these other ambitions or oaths that are just counterintuitive to, to what i'm doing so i have to be in the right mood to play as the oath takers in order for me to enjoy it otherwise i just feel like it's just not for me i know like uh one of one of the guys in the discord uh shinobi for instance he he absolutely loves the oath takers he thought it was he thinks it's a great thing and whatever and like everybody has their own opinions on this one this one's just not for me personally though i will try it down the road at some point so number nine is gonna hurt pretty bad i know there's a lot of people that are gonna love this that love this uh origin i am just i'm like middle of the road i love the or i love the actual origin itself like i love the history or the of the lore behind this origin but um i just i'm not a fan of i just don't like the actual brothers for this Okay, so number number nine is Davko Cultus. So I can feel the burn already. The Davko Cultus have four bros to start with. Um, one of the brothers do come with a whip, which again I say is a huge plus in my opinion. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, but over time, you're gonna have to sacrifice a cultus in order to give boons to other cultists and get them higher in the hierarchy. So when a 
there's a, every so many days there's an event that happens where you can you can sacrifice a brother. Now, in sacrificing a brother, if you have other brothers in your in your group that are not cultists, they freak the hell out because one of their brothers just got just got annihilated by all the cultists. And uh, yeah, it's got to be a confusing thing. If you know the lore and if you read, especially the Witch Hunter book, again, I've referenced that now. Get the Witch Hunter book. I'm telling you right now, it is incredible and it gives more context to Dav Cool. It's amazing. Love it. Uh, so yeah, just throwing that out there. But, um, but yeah, so there's there's a late game effect that after so many sacrifices, eventually Davkul asks for your greatest, the greatest of thee. And so your best, Dav, you have to somehow manage, if you really don't want a brother to die, you need to, you need to get another brother to be ahead of him in terms of XP. Because at some point, you're going to have to sacrifice your best bro. Two Bruce Bros eventually. So you have so you get the Dav Cool helmet and you get the Dav Cool armor. It is ridiculously strong. Ridiculously awesome looking. The the cosmetic of the armor is amazing as well. So the and again I, I said this before, the boons are incredible. The the things that you actually get from these sacrifices is incredible. The brothers, the actual cultists themselves, I don't like. I don't think that they're very good. I don't like that they I don't even like where they're I just don't like them. I don't like getting Dav Cool Cultists. I, I think it's fun. I think it's cool when you're converting. Oh, which brings me to the next point. I didn't bring this up. So to convert brothers, you have to... Uh, you can you can convert lowborn brothers. Anybody beyond that, higher or highborn, uh, you can't convert unless you give them brain injury. So there are people out there, I've seen this many times, guys, in my chat, um, <clears throat> where they purposely are farming injuries like permanent injuries like to to get a brain injury so that they can transfer a hedge knight into a dav cool cultist which is pretty nasty if you get if you're able to do that you can event eventually the events will happen where you're actually um you know you're converting these guys and that way they don't have a morale check when it comes or they don't get a morale check then they don't get so dissatisfied that they leave your company because you just slaughtered their best friend um besides that there's plenty of events so many events um uh, new cultists will join will join you over time you can recruit more cultists there are more you can find the cultists all over the place so you don't have to worry about that okay the reason i don't like it though is the simple fact that like i don't like the when it happens it feels like oh shoot if i'm not close to town where i can go to a tavern and drink you know, I lose good brothers and stuff. And and the other thing, too, is the melee is so bad. I find myself always picking backstabber and fast adaptation, giving them a single weapon, which they can, or one-handed weapon, where they can keep hitting and keep buffing themselves. And then when they become when they become the the highest cultist they can be, it's like they're, they're ridiculously strong. Like the buffs in terms of the hit points, in terms of the resolve, in terms of the melee defense and melee you get massive buffs it's incredible you can have some of the best brothers in the game based on these so it's such a weird give and take and i think that's why people like it so much i like it i like that but i also just the brothers just suck in my opinion my opinion calm down um yeah now in terms of the actual retinue and stuff again i would go for uh just your your like recruiter for instance a recruiter would be really good with the cultists because then you can you can pick and choose brothers that you really want you have a greater uh arrangement of brothers that can be either converted or more to look at when it comes to the actual cultists themselves uh, i would also go with the drill sergeant for the simple fact as well to get them at a higher level as fast as you possibly can you have to with these guys because they're just not just not great brothers to start out those are like the main retinues, I feel, for them. Of course, you could go with the meta retinues like Blacksmith or the Cook or whatever. That's cool. But for what it's worth, that's what I would do with the Cultists. Again, it's not my favorite. It's a good, it's a it's a really fun, good origin. Uh, but just not not my just not my cup of tea. Number eight is gonna be controversial to many because of the Davco Cultists falling behind them. However, I'm gonna explain why I think that they're a better faction overall and why they're a better origin and how it can be a lot of fun. In, in terms of strategy. So number eight is the deserters. The deserters start with three brothers that are deserters, decent armor, lower funds, and a noble house that's trying to hunt you down. You are the first to run in every action. So like when you go to face somebody, you get the first act with all of your brothers 
uh, to either run away or to get closer. This is a very, very powerful strategy that I don't think, I think goes, uh, it goes past people a lot, at least when I talk to people about deserters. You come with three brothers that are deserters, deserters are actually good brothers, except for the fact that the resolve is so poor. So if you don't want them, you can always get rid of them. It doesn't really matter to the actual origin itself. In terms of the funds, the funds actually really suck. Uh, high funds will be 1,250 crowns, medium is, is uh, 1,000, and lower is 750. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different things like um, uh, uh, events and so on that you can get. You can actually get more deserters in this group over time. But, um, but really, the cool thing is when you do run from a combat, you don't get any mood penalty, um, which may not seem like a big deal to many. But to me, it's like there are fights to, to pick and choose your fights and to be able to get away from people or get into a better position is so powerful. Uh, yeah, and and uh, I don't like the mood, the mood uh, problems when you're when you're leaving a fight. So, in terms of the retinue, I would always go with the negotiator to start, or the recruiter. Uh, the recruiter just to get different, you know, just to get different brothers in your in your group quickly. But also, I would say the negotiator specifically because of the bad relationships with the other noble house. You can get rid of it 15% faster, which is really nice. And you can also make a bunch of crowns as well with, you know, upcharging all the contracts. To some people, they may say that's not worth it and the, the bad relations will go away quicker by the time you even get to the negotiator. I disagree. I, I agree, but I disagree. I agree that you can naturally let it go down to zero. But just like the barbarians, I feel like it's very important to have the negotiator to get you back. Because you're going to be a dickhead to other people with the barbarians. Maybe not so much this faction, but still. It makes a difference. Next... Now, why is this better, in my opinion? Why do I like this fact, this origin so much? Because your first action in every round is so stinking powerful. You can go with an initiative run. You can go most most guys with initiative high, uh, like high initiative to go in front of everybody else. You can back up. You can get in better positioning. I like positioning myself in the best way possible. If I have a whole group of brothers that have Pathfinder and I start at a disadvantage down a hill, I can maneuver up the hill or into or back up a different hill or somewhere else. And a lot of times the enemy will chase me. A lot of times it happens that you're being caught by an enemy. You know, let's say an old house catches you and the dogs want to run after you, right? You would back up farther. Dogs can't reach you, right? The very next turn, depending on the initiative or the other trick that I want to throw your way, which would be the um, adrenaline. So the, the trick to adrenaline in this is that you take you take your max amount of steps, you hit adrenaline, and you wait. What happens is it's it's the barbarian method, essentially. So the enemy gets close. If they stun you or something happens in that regard, you immediately come back to your action. You become unstunned and go to the next turn. Then you're able to make the next attack. You can literally run in on people so hard, so fast. Now, the only fear to this would be if you're running in on the enemy right off the bat, they have the first chance to attack you or to shoot arrows at you with a better better hit chance. That is all subjective to how you're building out your brothers. If you're building a high initiative uh, run, you can go with dodge and have that range defense or you can have better defense in general. In the late game, it's insanely powerful because like, if you're facing legendary locations, you can get in position before everybody else. Like, if you're facing the Hexen Hut, you can jump forward or get guys spread out faster. If you're facing the the Kraken, you can find the plot of land that you want to stand on and defend from, or you can get closer to the head quickly. Um, if you're facing the Monolith, you can back up and get into a group again, or behind some rocks, and or get your you know your tanks out on the you know up to the north side so they can like hold off all the armies there's so much strategy every legendary location this is a to me a such a powerful powerful setup so uh yeah if you've never tried to desert, trust me deserters are super underrated um you don't have to you, you think of the guys running away like little uh you know whatever put the words behind it but this is a very powerful very powerful setup and I, I hope you guys give it an actual chance give it a give it a chance maybe you guys have i'm just saying
So that's my number eight. Number seven goes to the Peasant Militia, and it could actually go higher on my list, but I'll give you my reasons why not in a second here. You can you start out with 12 brothers that don't have much for armor or weapons. Uh, they also, you can have up to 16 men. That's really the special thing about this. You can have up to 16 men at once on the battlefield, as well as 25 in your total roster. You can never hire any more than a lowborn peasant. The backgrounds for the lowborn peasant would be the farmhand, poacher, day tailor, miller, Fisherman, Militia, Minstrel, Vagabond, Thief, Gambler, Butcher, Tailor, and Shepherd. The starting funds high would be 1,200 crowns. Medium is 1,000. Low is 700. And uh, yeah, your men also, or this, this specific thing, uh, specific origin also has 108 inventory slots compared to the normal 99. So one of the other cool things too is you can technically get more than a lowborn brother based on events and they don't take them away. Like you can still get a barbarian if you're running around up north or you can get like the king's or the uh, the king's guard or you can get any any of the special units and stuff. You can come across them. You can keep them in your, in your uh, party. Now why do I like this so much? Well, the simple fact is having more men on the battlefield is just fun. Uh, I remember... I always anytime I ever think of the pheasant militia I think of my the run that I had where I ended up facing the goblin city with like five handguns I had a front line that was really strong whatever they had shields and all that stuff they pretty much ran in there and I just blew the hell out of everything in that in that goblin city it was so much fun it was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had playing this game specifically because I love killing goblins they're fun they're fun uh, squishy units so there is that. Uh, the, the thing that makes this so powerful is the fact not only do you have all these men, but you also have the theory crafting aspect that you can you can play meta, you can play, um, you can theory craft and try all kinds of different styles of play. I encourage you guys to do all those things. It makes it it's so fun. It's so much fun. It's uh, funny to to do these things. Uh, in terms of the actual retinue, what I would suggest, again, the recruiter. I don't know why the recruiter, normally, normally I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think the recruiter so highly to always re, uh, suggest them, but this is a huge one. If you can come across a bunch of thieves or, bra oh, you know, brawlers aren't part of that. Uh, militia, that's what I'm thinking, militia. So militia are really strong units. You can find great militia brothers. I've had some incredible militiamen. So, uh, but yeah, but having the recruiter gives you more of an array of, of brothers, and also you can get the tryouts for 50% less, which is nice too, because they're not going to cost much in the first place. Lowborn don't cost a lot, and, and so you can buy and, and get rid of them instantly and not really feel like you're losing much on the crowns aspect. So keep that in mind. Uh, another way that you could do this, you could do like the drill sergeant again is another one that I always suggest the cartographer, cause you're going to have so many men that you can go out into the wilderness and take on these encampments a lot sooner for the simple fact of having, uh, strength in numbers. So keep that in mind. Um, 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 yeah, that's my suggestion with it. The reason why it falls though, is because I personally love having highborn brothers. I love having the oddities in between the low and the high, and you just can't get that with the Peasant Militia. I find myself going really far, defeating legendary locations with the Peasant Militia, and then I come back to the fact of like, you know what? I miss being able to get a Hedge Knight. I miss Oath Takers. I miss having uh, like a, a Sword Master. I find myself always getting one Sword Master in all my campaigns. <laughs> Or just randomly because it's like this it's something about it special so keep that in mind you, you just there is like that downfall of the late game where it's like it's not bad it's fun but you're just missing out on something it's something's missing it feels like when i play the peasant militia and then i find myself switching switching origins so now i'm just rambling anyways that's my thoughts on the peasant militia number six is going to be the gladiators gladiator starts with three experienced gladiators with special traits and highly date or high very high daily wages so starting out instead of it being 35 crowns like they normally are for gladiators they start with 50 crowns per gladiator which is 150 per day so keep that in mind and then also their legends of the arena they all have a unique trait the first gladiator has glorious endurance which makes it so there's a five percent reduction over uh every time he gets hit uh, up to 25% and then it resets itself each round. So pairing this with Indomitable will make it even more powerful, of course. 
So keep that in mind. Uh, you can have a pretty high reduction. And then the next one would be Glorious Quickness. Glorious Quickness, every time that you get a kill, you get one AP back. So if you're using a two-handed weapon that can, or a round swing, for instance, every person that you kill, based on that, will give you one back, which can give you more, uh, more attacks and so on. The next one is Glorious Resolve, which is pretty dang powerful. Uh, and it's a anytime you get a morale check, you have to you get to reroll that morale check, which I pers I love that so much personally. Um, so yeah, just keeping that in, in mind as well. Uh, you could have no more than twelve men in your roster at all times, and if three of all three of those starting gladiators die, then your campaign ends. The gladiators get up to level three. If you don't know this already, their stats and their stars are in. They're not like the stars are set in certain places with these brothers but the actual stats can be pretty dang powerful. Um, you start next to the arena, and that's one powerful thing because you can immediately start racking up the arena. As well, it, they already come with the arena fighter. So they already come with the arena fighter trait for facing the arena five times, so that is really nice to, to have right off the bat. Okay, so the starting funds. You start with either 950 on high, 700 on medium, and low on 400 if you're playing on beginner, if, you, if you're playing on beginner with this faction, you get 300 crowns per level of those. So, yeah, there's that. The other thing, too, is the inventory it goes from 99 to 90, so you get less inventory. So keep that in mind as well. There's a lot going on with the gladiators. I love the gladiators. I think they're a lot of fun. Yeah, you have to pay a lot in the beginning, but it's not bad. Like, you can make that money up so fast, and you can use, like, strategy with these three bros to be able to defeat whoever's in front of you. Um, there's a lot of role playing that you can do with this too. It's heavy in the meta factor. I've beaten this, I've beaten the whole, uh, I've beaten Battle Brothers with Gladiators pretty easily. I, I, I was, when I got early access to the game, I think I was the first, I'm pretty sure, because I, I posted the video even before the game came out and I beat the Mad Barbarian with the Katal Dagger. And the thing is, is like, you, I was able to steamroll these characters up so fast and get up there. It was like day, I don't even know, it was like day 30 or something, and I was up there and I defeated them, and it was a lot of fun. But my point still remains, is like, this is a faction that you can scale insanely fast. You can you start in the south, so that's a unique start, in my opinion, because of the arena. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. The next thing I would say in terms of the retinue, the retinue, this is one that I would put the paymaster behind. I think the Paymaster is really uh, prevalent for this run. Also, if you can get the Drill Sergeant, of course, so that you can level up your bros really quick. I like that as well. But the Paymaster is one that I really, highly suggest. Uh, the Surgeon, really going with the meta the meta setup, is going to be helpful for you. And um, let me see, Bounty Hunter. I love the Bounty Hunter with this faction as well. Okay, so that's pretty much the Gladiator's Origin. If you're Wondering where things go south, I would say it's just the money. Um, the money is the only thing that really makes this kind of tough. If you're not used to, if you're if you're not like a seasoned player or Battle Brothers player, this run can be kind of tough. I feel like the the majority of people who are playing this can can grasp what's going on and uh, have a lot of fun with it. I suggest it to anybody. I don't really see a bad side to this. The only thing would be less brothers. Um, but yeah, it's a very unique run. I, that's why it's number six number five is near and dear to my heart it's one that i've played countless times and it goes to the trading caravan so you get this caravan start where you get two caravan hands uh you also get a 10 percent better prices in buying and selling and then also not warrior which uh starts with no renown and gains only 66 percent of the normal rate at the normal rate you do end up getting uh one amber one uh, cloth roll dies the furs, and finally salt. So you do have a great start in terms of making a bunch of money right off the bat. You can get, uh, in terms of the starting funds, you, the high funds is 1,600, medium is 1,400, and low is 1,100. Doesn't even matter because, again, you go to the southern, southern city states or a festival or any place that's special, and you can sell all this stuff and make stupid money. So, yeah, this is one where you just, there's no real, like, special thing to it except for the fact that you can buy and sell things at better prices, which makes it great in the role play and also makes it a really strong campaign as well. You may say, well, you know, Renown, not having higher Renown, not getting closer to, um, you know, getting a noble house to recognize you or getting into the late game, whatever, like, bonuses you get from having the higher Renown. Sure, 
that's that's fine but that's where i would go to the retinue aspect of this and say what i like to do with the retinue is i like to get the minstrel right off the bat makes you get 15 percent more renowned every action and also gives you better uh tavern rumors and those rumors can get you to a place where you can get a named item and if it's a named item like shields and stuff you can sell for more money which who cares the other one that i would suggest would be the trader of course the trader increases the trade goods by one so any place you go to, you get one extra of whatever the item is. So if you see two salts and two copper, you could find three of each. And that is, again, going places and just selling stuff and getting very powerful. You can steamroll really fast when it comes to money. And personally, I that's what I like. I love doing that. I, I love, uh, you know, in real life, I'm a trader. I make, uh, I make extra money from trading. I have my own business and that. So like this kind of tears to that as well. I love that aspect. Um, and also when you become higher relations with people, you can make more money on top of that. You can really, like I say, role play and meta, they both come together in this clash. And I, I personally, personally love this run. So let me, and you can, there's no like limitations on anything. Like there's no real limitations besides the renown. So let me know what you guys think about the trading caravan. Do you agree with that one? Because uh, like I said, it's a special one to my heart. Number four goes to the lone wolf. And uh, Lone Wolf is an experienced hedge knight that has great equipment and low funds. He can only have up to 12 other warriors with him in his roster. And if he dies, the campaign ends. In terms of the starting funds, it starts out pretty low at, at 1,200, medium at 1,000, and finally low at seven, uh, seven, 700. And then uh, in terms of you playing on the expert difficulty, you get negative 100 per high, low, medium, and low tier. The next thing too is that his inventory space goes from 99 down to 90 and uh yeah you can't get the traits survivor greedy or disloyal and uh, yeah you can't he can't be a part of any 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 type of uh, events that can kill him or sacrifice him or anything like that he also has a negative two to his melee defense which is not his range now is from four to eight uh, i don't know exactly why they did that but that's the case and then he has access to all the other events with the lone wolf origin now this lone wolf origin i i it's one part it's nostalgia the other part it's like it's a freaking hedge knight it's hedge knight was designed to be the the tip of the iceberg right the, the best the best brother and when i use the hedge knight the first thing i usually do is i go and i sell the long sword and end up buying like a one-handed sword for the repose uh, right post or repost value however you want to say it i say repost anyways uh the idea is you go to a mound you stand up higher than everybody else they surround you and you just slash them to death and uh that's how i go about it there's a lot of ways to do this some people buy like some peasants to just stand in front of him get slaughtered then he goes in some people just use just try to get him up to the lone wolf trait and go through the whole campaign with just one brother uh the lone wolf guy and killing everything there's a lot of ways to play this it's a lot of fun it feels like um you feel like a badass when you start this run you feel like you're you are the difference maker um i just i love it and i don't think i'm pretty sure it doesn't say here i'm i've done it enough times i'm pretty sure that you don't have to pay he doesn't there's nothing to pay for him like you do, like he doesn't have a cost as long as he's the only brother you're using so it's all all your crowns are pure liquid so that's really cool. In terms of the retinue, again, I like agent for him, blacksmith for him, bounty hunter for him. Uh, cartographer is really powerful with him because he, you know, again, if you're just going out in the wilderness, immediately you're gonna find stuff. Having outlook to see farther. Uh, there's so many things. So many, like again, you can. There's so many ways that you can build him out, and so many ways that you can play this campaign. It's so open ended, which makes it so much fun. Um, I could have them higher up on my list, but there are other ones that I just, I just simply like more for the uniqueness factor. But, uh, but yeah, so Lone Wolf is pretty simple. It's pretty cut and dry. There's just many ways to play it. It's really fun. It can have its, it can be really difficult or it can be really easy, all depending on how you decide you want to play it out. So that's number four. Number three goes to my old number one, and it is interchangeable with the next three because it is such a great origin. I had so much fun either rping it or from the meta side of it it's just an overall fun good good uh origin so number three goes to the northern raiders it's three experienced barbarians that have issues with the northern houses that hate them of course 
And uh, the thing that makes them so special is the fact that you have a higher chance to get any items slain from enemies as loot. Um, this is going to be the most prevalent factor when it comes to the Northern Raiders. The, ra the Barbarians themselves are at level 3 and they have a monk tagging along. So you have a little bit of wiggle room to make them what you want to be or what you want them to be as you're heading south. The starting funds are 2,500 at high, medium is 1,000, low is 700. And in terms of what they're carrying, they have silverware, they have silver bowl, and finally a warhound, which can help you out in terms of those battles heading south. And once you get to the southern factions, you can start selling things for better money or better crown. So keep that in mind. Um, there are events like to get rid of these negative relations with the northern houses. There's events like this one here, this uh, Raider Origin uh, Redemption. It's where they're like, hey, we don't want to do this anymore. Give us some money and we'll be good. That's cool. The thing that I would suggest if you're doing this run to get rid of the bad relations right as quickly as possible is to get the first crisis event to be the Noble Wars. Noble Wars make it so that when you complete the Noble Wars, they immediately all the factions are like, okay, we're signing a treaty. We're not enemies anymore. Whatever. They might have a little... They might have... Uh, you know, they may still be a bad relation with you, but they're not going to attack you anymore. And that is, uh, that's pretty helpful, especially when you're doing something you get caught off guard with mercenaries chasing you down because of the bad relations. Or you can choose to saw it off, or you can tell them to saw it off and go kill all of their caravans. And that's kind of the, the tricky thing with this faction. It's like you can role play it out so hard. Um, you can find the caravans and stuff, these enemy caravans, and just keep keep destroying them and steal all their armor. You can get stupid armor early on uh, with this faction. For the simple fact of, like, you find a caravan that's only got, like, five, five um, noble housemen within it, and you kill them, you can take their armor right off the bat. You have good, good units. You can get good units quicker. And, uh, yeah, this faction is so open-ended... I love it. I would say in terms of the retinue, like things that are very important, I would say like like blacksmith, for instance. So that way, if somebody does die, you get all the armor that you are quickly getting on your bros early on. The other thing that I would suggest, of course, is bounty hunter because more named items being thrown at you, the better chance you have at getting them. And, you know, if you're doing the role play side of it, yeah, brigand. The brigand would be a good one because you can see... Um, outside of your radius where the caravans are and if you just want to heckle people forever there you go I will say in the late game you know that becomes less of a priority to destroy the caravans unless you actually need food or whatever and go back out into the wilderness or if you're just gonna be a dick for the whole campaign which more power to you I, I think that's uh, that's a fair way to play the game um, but yeah that's that's just my opinions on it uh, you could go with like the scavenger so you're you're recouping a lot of the stuff that you're destroying and on top of our and on top of actually getting it and bringing with you out of wherever you're at uh, like like um, destroy chain mail like you're not only destroying the chain mail and keeping it but you're also getting tools and supplies as well on top of that so yeah there's so much good here it's so much fun I, I've had uh, I've had a ridiculous blast playing the northern raiders let me know what you guys think in the comment section below number two caught me by surprise when it first was released and it's the anatomist i stinking love the anatomist i can't tell you the refreshness that this campaign has given me to play battle brothers to come back at full force on battle brothers um i've beaten the whole game with the anatomist they are insanely strong insanely fun the they are literally the beast slayers i wish that i they are literally they this is the closest thing to the witcher in my opinion because they kill something they, they extract whatever it is from them the elixirs from them they give them to brothers and give them new mutations make them stronger it's it's freaking amazing i haven't even gone over what it is so you start with three men with really high funds starting <laughs> like a lot of funds which is even funnier so you get three anatomists the high funds would be 30 3200 medium would be 27 and low is 2200 the uh the researchers again they take the fallen corpses they gain knowledge to empower your men to make them stronger but they're not fighters which is kind of interesting because anatomists when you when you hire anatomists usually they have really high melee which is so bizarre it, but they're not fighters trust me they're not fighters so the fighters uh, your men will never never be confident morale I have always been in this game a huge 
uh, I've always hit the table for a resolve because having having high confidence, the the buff that you get from high morale is just too good in my opinion not to have. But then the anatomists come along, and you seemingly just seem to be like, ah, who cares, right? Like, I don't. I it's it's such a unique. It's changed my perspective on Battle Brothers and what's to come because this is so. Again, open-ended. I like open-ended type of content that, that is added to the game. And this is doing just that. So with that, you do end up getting a research book, or these books of research. They That's where, when you kill somebody, when you kill an enemy, you get a, a potion of sorts, right? An elixir of some sort. When your brother drinks it, he becomes sick, but he also gains, like, supernatural powers for the rest of the campaign. Like, Battle Brothers is low fantasy, but this is intense. Um... And each one of these books tells you what it is that 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 allows you to use that that specific potion. So if your brother dies and he has that potion, he or he took it, you just have to kill the enemy one more time and they'll make it again, and then you can give it to another brother. However, the trickness, the trickiness to this is, you can give all these potions to a brother, but he'll be sick for a hundred plus days if you have way too many on one brother. So what you can do, the the trick is to get the uh, the water skin from the grotesque tree, which eliminates any of illness, il any illnesses and stuff, so you can get rid of all the sick. So you can pretty much make a brother who is un who is otherworldly, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and it, I've done that now, and it was just like the most. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done in Battle Brothers. Um, but yeah, so all these potions, they're super unique, and I I can't even remember all of them honestly. But like killing the crack, and I remember getting the crack, and I can't remember what it is now. But I just remember thinking it was uh, it's such an incredible experience. They also have an insane amount of events um, that are good, bad. They they really range. They can give you new traits that are good or bad. So just keep that in mind as well. In terms of the actual retinue and what I would do with the retinue, you know it's kind of tough. I would say the bounty hunter is a good one. But ultimately, I feel like what really matters with them is, is exploring and killing everything and getting as strong as possible. So Outlook would be a really good one to have. Another one that would be good to have is like the Cook, so you can be out in the wilderness longer. I already said Bounty Hunter. Um, I would say another one is the, uh, yeah, the Scout, definitely. So, yeah, maybe more of the meta, more meta stuff, but find a brother. My suggestion is find try to find the best of the best brothers and to give them these potions because not every not all these potions will tier to one specific type of unit you can there can be all types of different units like guys with shields or guys that are uh backliners or, or they seeing in the dark for instance and all that kind of thing like it is such a freaking see this is what i was gonna say this is the one this is the faction that should have the should have the 10 negative 10 prices these guys are all weird you're gonna have guys walking in it's like literally a circus like people are walking into town looking different <laughs> like considerably different uh and i feel like beast slayers should have that that ability should be on here and the maybe the never be confident morale should go to the beast slayers which may not make as much sense but i think it makes more sense than people just not giving them right prices instead of seeing these these plague doctor looking guys um, yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on that. Keep in mind, it's not only open-ended, you can make super soldiers, you can make unique brothers across the board. It is stupid fun. It's probably the most fun faction of them all. Number one is going to go to the Band of Poachers. And before I get into what the Band of Poachers are exactly, I will say this. I did say that they were all interchangeable, the top three. But I will say the reason why this has to be number one for me as of now is because I asked myself this simple question. If I had to eliminate every origin in Battle Brothers and only be able to play one origin campaign, what one would it be? I found myself kept picking the Band of Poachers. It is so it is a strong campaign but it's also a lot of fun so let's get into what exactly it is so starting out you get three brothers you get a hunter a poacher and another poacher all of them have ranged weapons the special ability with the band of poachers is that you can move faster specifically you can move 15 percent faster and you can always get a scouting report of your enemies so anybody who's walking on the landscape you can tell you can get like a report as to what's in the army what uh, not only what individual units are in the 
party, but also how many abouts is that company. And also when you go to like a temple or something or some sort of ruins or whatever it is, you can tell exactly what's in there. Maybe not the total number, you'll have an idea, but uh, that is insanely powerful. Especially in the late game when you come across like champions and stuff. You want the named items, that's what I'm all about. So that's one of the reasons that I love this. Now on the flip side, you do have a debuff of items in your inventory or how many slots you have. So the normal slot number is 77, but this one you get 81. Now, that doesn't matter so much to me because I know I can upgrade the cart and get closer to a higher number. But also I find myself, I sell a lot. Like I, I don't keep a lot of crap in my inventory all the time. So a lot of times I'm selling it off. If I don't need it, I'm not gonna keep it. I'm not a hoarder in that way. I just hoard crowns. That's my, that's my big issue in Battle Brothers. So <laughs> there is that. Now, so you see the you see the potential, you see the, the strength of this moving faster. You get a uh, scouting report of your enemies. So not only can you evade your enemies, but you also know what the enemy is. The the the, the retinue, and I gotta give a huge shout out, shout out to Bidey or Bidai, or however you say that. He's on Reddit. So essentially what he's saying is that the scout, if over a, a span of seven days, right? Over seven days, at 15%, the movement speed of getting to any any location is the equivalent of one wage, one full wage for each brother. So every seven days, you're essentially making back the difference of those brothers, on top of being able to evade everyone and uh, getting to a place faster. So uh, I want to, again, I, I appreciate uh, you being cordial and telling me that information, because I've never really thought of it from that standpoint. I have used it in the past to go faster, but again... I use mods to go quick and then pause when I come across an enemy. That's not trying to be cheesy or anything. I just don't have the time being a father, being full-time worker, owning my own company as well. I just don't have time for all that. So that's why I devalued this a little bit but said it was still really powerful. The next thing I would say would be like the lookout because of the sighting radius. If you want to be able to see, uh, you know, obviously you have to build around the band of poachers and what they're good at. And Outlook giving you 25% more radius to see and more informa extended information on footprints is way more powerful. Cartographer is really good too because you can go to location to location and make uh, more money as you're going about. Exploring is really powerful with the Band of Poachers because of that speed. You have the Bounty Hunter. The more champions you find, the better it is. I just don't see an honest bad thing to the Band of Poachers. I, I think it's the best faction. Personally, I think it's the most, if if it's not the most fun, it's one of the most fun factions. And uh, it allows me to have a little more of a, uh, I have the ability to choose what I want to do. And I choose my fights and I pick my battles and so on. So that's what I like with the Band of Poachers. That's why they're my number one. So let me know what you guys think. I would love to see your guys' uh, your list from 14 to 1 in the comment section i love having these conversations guys in the discord uh we have a lot of guys that play battle brothers we have a lot of people who love the game but also want to have that discussion if you disagree with what i have to say i am in the discord every so often in and out of the the voice chats so if you'd like to have a conversation with me if you'd like to debate some things by all means come on in with that being said guys i'm going to come out with some more videos down the road here thanks for coming out don't forget to hit the like leave a comment and i will see you in the next video.